All right, we are going to pick up with the Algebra 3, 17B Review, Part 2. Question number 15. Question number 15 in here says the measurements are 305, 247, 416, 538, uh, 454, 322, 444, 306, 200, 520, 239, and 296 using your graphing calculator. You need to find the mean standard deviation. Uh, minimum Q1, Q, uh, median Q3, and the max. So basically, it's a box and whisker plot. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to plug all that in. Uh, you should already know how to do that with number 15. Uh, your mean, okay, or otherwise known as X, uh, the absolute value, or with your repeat line over that, uh, it shows 357.25. Okay, your standard deviation is 108.29, 108.29, then the rest of this is drawn out like this where we have our minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and max, and it's going to show that way uh, when you do uh, should, should be one variable statistics. So we get 200 for our min, uh, 271.5, 271.5 here, median 314 there, 449 for Q3. And our max is 538. So your calculator is going to give you all that if you plug your data. Uh, you're going to plug your data into your list. Um, so you're going to hit stat, list, plug in all of that data, uh, then hit stat again. I uh, go over, uh, let's see, on here you go stat over calculator, uh, one variable statistics. Uh, you may have to go down to calculate, but then, and you may have to scroll down to get all of your numbers. Okay. All right, so that's 15. Questions about that, you can email me or ask. Number 16. 16. Uh, test scores were normally distributed with a mean of 68, standard deviation of 4. Approximately what percentage of scores lie between 64 and 72? So let's start off by uh, putting our data in here. Uh, we've got a mean of distribution at... Uh, 68 says so a standard deviation of 4. So we get 72, 76, and 80. Over here, uh, we get 64, 60, and 56. Uh, so finishing this out, we'd see 68, 95. And 99. Okay, so for A, uh, before, between 64 and 72. So between 64 and 72, here to here is 68%. And B, B is going to ask between uh, 68 and 72, which is really simply going to be 68 divided by 2. So 34%. Okay. So we'll check our answer out. Let's make sure that we got everything right. Uh, number 16, 68, and 34. Right. Number 17. Okay. Number 17, uh, solve for x. We've got natural log x plus 5. Uh, equals natural log 3 plus okay. natural log, I'm going to find it here, x minus 5. All right, so what you'll notice in here is that my natural logs all have the same base. So I can write this as 
3 times x minus 5 equals x plus 5. Okay, just change that around. So 3x minus 15 equals x plus 5. Okay, they want us to solve for x. Uh, I'm going to add 15. Subtract x. So we get 2x equals 20. x equals 10. Okay, let's check our answers on that. Uh, for 17. 17x equals 10. 18. Eighteen. A parabola has y equals negative five for its directrix. Its focus is at zero five. Find the coordinates of the vertex and write the equation of the parabola. Okay. So we have something like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not great, and you'd be better off to use some graph paper for it. But uh, my parabola uh, has a directrix at y equals negative five. So one, two, three, four, five, and because it's y equals, it's a horizontal line. Okay, so there's my directrix. My focus is at zero five. So all the way up here, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's my focus. So it's going to tell me something real clearly is that uh, the equation. All right, for one, uh, I need to find uh, my vertex. So my vertex should be right here because it's going to be half the distance. So if you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, half that distance is there. Uh, I know that it's going to open up because it's going to open away from the directrix. So uh, the first thing I know is that my coordinates for my vertex are 0, 0. Okay. The next thing uh, that I know is we can go ahead and we can use our equation. y equals 1 over 4p x squared. We don't need any of the rest because we're using 0, 0. Uh, p is the distance from my vertex to my directrix, or sorry, from my vertex to my focus, so that's 5. So um, 4 times 5 is 20, so I get 1 over 20 x squared. And I'll check my answer out on number 18. y equals 1 over 20 x squared. Okay. If our vertex was anywhere else, uh, the formula that we would want to use is going to be y minus, uh, I think it's k equals x minus h squared. Right, yeah, like that. Okay, now where I would add my, my y over to the other side. Okay, how to use that equation using the coordinates. Um, actually, no, almost, almost right. 1 over 4p x minus h squared. All right, we just didn't need that because we were using the origin. All right, 19. 19, solve the equations below given that we have to be uh, between 0 and 360 degrees. Notice on 19 um, that my range is in radians, so my answer is going to have to be in radians. Okay. It's uh, using sine 2x plus radical 3 over 2 equals 0. All right, we want to solve for our x value here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is move our radical 3 over 2. So we get sine 2x equals negative radical 3 over 2. All right, sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got two places where our y-axis is going to be negative at. That's going to be down here, okay, negative radical 3, hypotenuse of 2, which will make this guy 1, which means this is 60, okay, 
and we get over here, negative radical 3 to negative 1. So we want to know where these angles are. Uh, this is 60 here. Okay. Uh, we're at 60 past, so what we're saying there is that sine 2x, or even really just 2x, 2x equals 240 degrees. And at our other location, so here's 240, and here's 360, or not 360, but 300. So 300. Now, if we want just x, we're going to divide by 2. So we're going to get 120 and 150, which means we have options to go around again. So we're going to take 240 plus 360. 600. And that's going to give us uh, 300. We could do 300 plus 360. It gives me 660 divided by 2 is 330, which still fits in. Okay, so we get those four. Let's check and see if those answers are right. Um, let's see, we're on 19. All right, we're going to have to end up converting all of those into radians. So what we're going to try to do is do that. Um, we'll do that at the, well, we'll do it now because I think uh, we'll do all of A and then we'll go over to another page. So uh, to get these into radians, we're going to take 120 divided by 180. And that's going to come out to 2 pi over 3. Okay, 150 divided by 180 is 5 pi over 6. 300 divided by 180 is 5 pi over 3. And 330 divided by 180 is 11 pi over 6. Okay, so you'll get a decimal, you'll have to convert them to fraction, you can hit second fraction. Uh, I'll check these answers. 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3, 11 pi over 6. Those are 19a. Okay, 19b. 19b. Um, okay, so we've got 2 sine x minus 1 and 2 cosine x minus radical 2 equals 0. So we'll have to solve each of these for 0. So we've got 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. So add 1, divide by 2. Sine x equals 1 half. Okay. So sine x equals 1 half. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we have 1, 2, radical 3. This would be a 30 degrees. We'd also have that same thing here. 1, 2, negative radical 3, 30 degrees. This one is 30 degrees. This one is 150. Okay, because it's just sine x, it's just 30 and 150. So what we're saying is that x, x equals 30 degrees and 150 degrees. Now we'll have to convert those to the radians here in a little bit. Okay. All right, let's come over and do the other one. We'll convert all of them to radians at the same time. Here we've got 2 cosine x minus radical 2 equals 0. Add radical 2, divide by 2. Cosine x equals radical 2 divided by 2. Okay. Um, we don't have uh, any situation where our x-axis is radical 2. So what we actually have to do here is unrationalize the denominator, which would give us cosine x equals 1 over radical 2. Because you can tell if I rationalize that denominator, I'm going to get 
multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. It's going to give me radical 2 on top, 2 on the bottom. Okay. So here, where I'm getting adjacent is 1. Hypotenuse is radical 2. Okay. 1, radical 2, which I means this is 1, which means this is 45. Okay, we get the same thing over here. Okay, so this guy is 45 degrees. This one should be 135 degrees. So, uh, so what we're saying is that x equals those things. We can't go around again, so we're at 45 and 135. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is convert these to radians by dividing by 180. 30 divided by 180, math fraction is pi over 6. 150 divided by 180 is 5 pi over 6. 45 divided by 180 is pi over 4. And 135 divided by 180 is 3 pi over 4. Let's check those. Okay. On B, we have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, pi over 4, and 7 pi over, 7 pi over 4. Uh, let's see. I might have made a mistake in here somewhere. Let's see, 135 plus 45. Nope. I see what I did. All right. Because the adjacent has to be positive, we can't actually use that quadrant. It's got to be positive. So we actually have to use this guy down here. Maybe some of you picked out that problem, which means this angle is not 135. 45 degrees shy of 360, which means it is 315 degrees. So 315 So 315 divided by 180 is 7 pi over 4. And we'll check that. 7 pi over 4. So those are our answers down here at the bottom. 20. Last question. Uh, find the area of the triangle. degrees, 15, 12. All right, what we're going to do, we know that our base is 15. We know we're going to divide by 2. What we're going to find is we have to find the height. So we're going to use this where we know this is 12. And because that line is supplementary, this is going to be 60. So we're going to use sine 60 equals opposite x over 12, or 12 sine 60. Okay. Well, the other way of looking at this, too, is that that would be, this would be 6, this would be 6 radical 3 in case we need that. So our answer should be 6 radical 3 times 15. I'm going to see what form our answer is in. On um, 20. Okay, they're going to get it as a decimal anyway. So we could have done 12 sine 60. Um, you can do 12 sine 60 times 15. Divided by 2. Should get 77 point. 77.94 centimeters squared. That's our answer right there, and that's your 20 questions.